This is Myopia Genetics and Environment. Nature versus nurture has been an argument for over 100 years whether the factors of inheritance and genes cause the outcome for certain things in certain people versus nurture or their experiences and their lear learned culture. However, for many ocular diseases and disorders, genetics and environment actually work together to cause a problem. One example of that would be in diabetes. Now, type 2 diabetes has a strong link to family history and, and lineage. It's strongly associated with genetics and ultimately can develop into retinopathy. However, our environmental choices we make really determine whether we're going to develop genetic uh, diabetic retinopathy. If we keep in good shape, we eat well, we probably will not develop retinopathy. However, if we do, don't do those things, we could develop retinopathy. So this is a situation where the genetics might cause you to get disease or not, but the outcome of retinopathy or not might be dependent upon how you live and how you take care of yourself. And that's true of a number of different eye diseases. Cataracts and macular degeneration, as an example, are both affected by smoking and sun exposure. So there are genetic components though to determine whether you'll get cataracts or macular degeneration. But there's also environmental factors that we choose to take care of or don't take care of that decide when and how bad we get a disease. Ultimately, juvenile myopia is also influenced by both genetics and the environment. Now, there are certainly some types of myopia that are purely genetic diseases. One example of that is Marfan syndrome. How do we know, though, that there's an environmental factors going on as far as the development of myopia? Well, we can also look at the actual change in incidence of myopia over time. And as we can see, we've actually almost gained 10% incidence of myopia, prevalence of myopia, over the past 20 years. So that is actually unexplainable in terms of, of, of genetics. If you have a 10% increase in the population over one generation, it's not due to, to the actual genetics, but something in the environment. So there's a number of environmental factors that we talk about with myopia. Two of the big ones are the amount of near work we do. So the amount of reading we do may be associated with the development of myopia, but also the amount of time we spend outdoors and the light levels, the luminance that we receive may actually contribute to whether we get myopia or not. Those that spend more time outside have less myopia. Those that spend more time inside or with less light develop myopia. And we've known this for quite some time that there's a seasonality to the myopia progression. We've talked about this in previous lectures, but here's another example from the Comet study looking at how the children progressed at different months of the year. Like usual, those children that pr progressed most were during the winter, colder, darker months when they spent more time indoors and there was less outdoor light. Conversely, during the summertime, myopia progression also was slower. Well, what do we talk about parents in myopia? Do you get your, any of your myopia from your parents? Well, here's a large study looking at all the different studies associating parents with myopia. And the end result is, if a child has one myopic patient, they're about two to four times more likely to develop myopia than if they had no myopic parents. Now, if both your parents are myopic, then you have a three to eight times more likely risk to develop myopia. So that's a pretty strong argument for some sort of involvement with parents. But you probably ask yourself the question, but these patients have both in the same genes and in the same environment. They live in the same households with their parents. They've had some of the same input from a, a, a nurture standpoint, but they also have some of the same genes from a nature standpoint. And that's when we start to look at things like twin studies. When we compare monozygotic twins to dizygotic twins, so identical twins versus non-identical twins, the identical twins, both for axial length and for spherical refractive error, are highly correlated. Conversely, though, for non-identical twins, while they're still correlated, they're not nearly as correlated as much, suggesting that genes do play an important role in explaining why people become myopic or not. But there's also some environmental factors going on. Since then, we've actually done a number of studies looking at genes. Here's an example of three genes out there and how they actually change and induce myopia. But you don't need to know these three genes for any particular reason, but they're just examples. In these three genes, CRNG, 
A2BP1 and BRSS56, the number of alleles you have determines how far or how much you progress. Obviously, zero alleles is no copies of that gene. One is you got it from one parent, and two is you got it from both parents. In all cases, if you get more co copies of that allele, your myopia is, is higher. It's also important to no note that some of these genes cause early onset myopia. So in, the, in examples A and C, the myopia happened before the study started at the age of eight. So whatever had caused this was a gene that affected before the age of eight. Conversely, the middle group, the B group, only started to have a divergence of myopia later on in life in 12, 13, 14 years of age. So these genes might be causing late onset compared to the early onset of the other genes. Ultimately, though, juvenile myopia is influenced by both genetics and environment. Since then, they've discovered over 140 different types, different loci for refractive error. And we know that if you have multiple different alleles, the risk for higher, higher levels of myopia increases. So the more different copies of different genes for myopia or hyperopia, the higher risk factor is for them. Thank you.